Freemasons Hall is the purpose-built HQ of the Freemasons of Ireland, or the Grand Lodge of Ireland, as it is also known. And we've been here, present in this building since 1869, but we were formed as a body in 1725, making us the second oldest Grand Lodge in the world. In the mid-1800s, this man, Augustus Frederick, the third Duke of Leinster, decided it was high time we had our own purpose-built meeting place. And we purchased two derelict townhouses on this site, 17 and 18 Molesworth Street, and we flattened. We held an architectural competition. This was won by a man called Edward Holmes. And this room opened for the first Grand Lodge of Ireland in its own purpose-built HQ on 21st of June, 1869, with Augustus in that chair, which was purpose-built for him in 1836. Since then, this hall is home to the 32 Dublin Masonic Lodges that use this room on a regular basis. And these are men who performed the ancient mystery plays of the operative Freemasons, illustrating with symbols, signs and words the moral lessons contained within Freemasonry. Welcome to the second room here at Freemasons Hall, which is known as the room of the Royal Arch Companions, an appendant body tagged onto Freemasonry in the 1700s. This room was opened in 1871, and the architect behind it was a man called Duncan Campbell Ferguson, one of the runner-ups in the architectural competition to design the building. It draws in here the Victorian fascination with the Egyptian themes um, and with the symbols that were popular at the time. Freemasons and the appendant bodies are like magpies. We tend to lift symbols from anywhere and work them into our own ceremonial degrees. So in here, you find menorah, you find lotus leaves and petals, symbolic of regeneration and renewal. You find the number seven on top of the menorah. Again, a very sacred number in some of the ancient mystery school teachings. As this room opened, it became one of the feature points of the building and it is rented to a body known as the Grand Royal Arts Chapter, which members of Masonry are entitled to join after one year's membership. The third room that opened here at Freemasons Hall was this, which is the Knights Templars Chapel. Again, an appendant body that was tagged onto Freemasonry in the mid-1700s. You must be both a Freemason, a Royal Arch Companion, and in this case, a Christian of any denomination in order to be able to join this branch. Unlike many popular theories, this is not a hierarchy that gets smaller and smaller as you go up. Each body is sovereignly and independently governed and has its own purpose-built room for which it pays a fee to Grand Lodge. This room was opened in 1873 and the windows that we see here at the back are actually a gift from Queen Victoria. And this chair was made for Albert Edward, Edward the future Edward VII, to come and open this room as the distinguished guest of honour who was invited at the time. Welcome to the fourth and final room here at Freemasons Hall. This room was opened in 1874 and it marked the completion of the building. This room is used by a body known as the Prince's Rose Croix, who were formed in the late 1700s and again were tagged on to Freemasonry as an appendant body. The Freemasons of Ireland and indeed all the appendant bodies that use this building, well, they are in fact some of the biggest donors to charities. Over the last 10 years, we've donated to the Laura Lynn Foundation, CanCare, the Northern Ireland Children's Hospice, and indeed many other charities who would receive regular donations from the Grand Lodge of Ireland and Masonic Lodges themselves.